Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, the first episode of this morning uh, on the very first day of the year. It's interesting that January 1st is a Monday, and uh, we're looking forward to how many goodies this year will bring all of us. Uh, today, Molegin is an environmentalist and APC chieftain. He joins me live from Abuja. Ambassador Elijah Oyangba is a former Nigerian ambassador to Burundi. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying the course on the program. Very interesting development, particularly when we consider Mr. President's position. Ambassador, you've been talking about um, his trips, you know, across the world. He mentioned it this morning as well, that everything is done is in the best interest of Nigerians. And one key of such consultations is the agreement he mentioned has been able to reach with the German Chancellor in committing to, you know, speed up the delivery of the, C the Siemens Energy power project uh, that will ultimately deliver reliable supply of electricity, which everyone agrees is key, you know, to development of other areas. Talk to us about how soon, you know, Mr. President has made quite a number of those trips. You highlighted them earlier. Uh, you know, from your experience, how soon do you think Nigerians can begin to, you know, rip the benefits of this multinational uh, collaborations. Okay, thank you very much, uh, my brother. Uh, let me uh, emphasize on the fact that uh, the Nigerian Siemens deal is actually not a new one. It's uh, something that uh, commenced in 2018, I believe, uh, with the previous administration. But of course, you know that uh, once there is a handshake, uh, you know, from one administration to another, some projects are dropped, some are picked up, and all of that. And I believe that what the president has done is to look at uh, these, um, you know, transactions that he took over. Obviously, have identified the power sector as a key element in in, in driving uh, both infrastructural and economic uh, prosperity for the country. And uh, I believe that he is giving it the attention that it demands. Uh, this was a major, major reason why the president um, attended, uh, you know, was invited to Germany in the last meeting there, uh, where he not only signed and also continued the conversation, uh, even um, uh, in Dubai at the COP28, uh, uh, you know, climate change uh, summit uh, that took place uh, uh, sometime a couple of weeks ago. You know, so it shows the, 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 S, the importance the president has attached to this. And in terms of timelines, I actually don't have that data at the moment, uh, but I know that the president understands, and even the Minister of Power and everyone involved understands the need uh, to hasten this, because um, uh, you can't have a, you know, from the president's speech too, you heard him clearly say that you cannot have a meaningful development without power supply in the country. So that means that this has also become a very important element, uh, a factor, uh, a policy that uh, he must uh, work very hard on achieving. Now, let me digress a little bit, because um, in all of our speeches, uh, you know, I think we've uh, practically touched on the key elements of his speech. Uh, but there's also an element in his speech where he made it very clear to Nigerians that the responsibility of building a prosperous nation is not just that of the president, of the governors, of the elected officials, of the ministers. I think that um, all of us must understand that we all have a role to play. And that's the reason why I, I love the fact that he had to speak to, you know, uh, opposition uh, to say that, listen, elections are over. We must find a way to work together to build our nation. Everyone is a leader in their rights, uh, starting from our families, even at, in, you know, to our communities, uh, yeah. to the churches. There are clear levels of uh, influences that we all wield. And I believe that for us to you know, see the change we want to see in the country, everyone has got a role to play. Yes, government must lead, and lead they must. Yes, uh, we must cut the cost of governance. Yes, uh, we must hold our leaders responsible. But we must also be good citizens ourselves. We have to find a way to you know, ensure that we are also pulling our strings to ensure that we are working together towards the same objective. Indeed. I had the president talk about the fact that uh, there has to be a living wage. You know, this is also a recognition of a fact uh, that what we are paying, maybe as minimum wage or what the workers are earning, are also not good enough in the light of current economic realities. Uh, obviously, uh, this must be something that uh, the labor unions must be happy to hear. 
Uh, it also comes from the heart of empathy to say that, listen, we know this is not clear. Uh, if you travel to countries like the US, they got what they call the American dream. I think what everyone must come together to build in Nigeria is also the Nigerian dream, where people can achieve um, whatever they need to achieve, irrespective of where they come from, right. irrespective of the region that they belong. And I also talk about the fact that Nigerians are also expecting inclusivity mm. as well. You know, we don't have to shut out one part or shut out another. Everybody must come together to bring whatever they have for the benefit and for the I agree with you. The it, it, it's hard to tell whether the role of the citizenry is clearly stated or whether or not the average Nigerian understand what he or she has to do differently. Another dimension will be if they are inspired to do so because, you know, the expectation is that the issue of, his, of security and welfare you know, lie solely with government. But Mr. Imole, you were talking about his extension, you know, of Olive Branch to the opposition, asking that the election was over and there is need for them to work together. You're a politician yourself. They say it's a winner takes all reality after an election year in Nigeria. How does that work in real terms? You know, having the opposition join government. Thank you very much. Um, you see, it's very easy to, uh, to get people to your side if you are a performing uh, person. I mean, let me use it that way. If Bola Tinubu decides to do that, I am going to lead by example. I'm going to ensure that my eight-point agenda is, you know, sacrosanct. I'm going to make sure now that, yes, there has never been a president like me in terms of performance, in terms of execution, in terms of relationship, in terms of accommodation, in terms of empathy, in terms of everything. I'll tell you that we no job for the opposition. There will be no job. So it is his decision, and he has it. He has the capacity. He has demonstrated it. You know, and now I'm not surprised that he's, you know, uh, you know, the only branch to everyone that is in the opposition. Unfortunately, the, the, the culture of opposition in Nigeria, you know, has actually died down. I mean, and it, people, it's just a bandwagon effect. Everybody wants to really be with a party, a control, a ruling party. And nobody is interested, only a few people. And the few people that are interested, even the people themselves, they don't even have the power. They are not empowered to provide that kind of opposition. If the ruling party is performing, if full security is ensured, if there is security of you know, property and human beings, everybody, almost everybody will be mobilized. I think that is where the government should really invest in, talking about national orientation. This is one area, talking about Nigerian dream. How many Nigerians can actually die for government or die for Nigeria today? That is a big question. Because everybody, you know, this is an economy, this is a culture, this is a climb where almost everything has been monetized. If you ask somebody, okay, there is going to be a job somewhere, the first question he's going to ask, or he or she is going to ask is that, how much is the pay? He's not even talking about what he or she is bringing to the table. You see, we have this mindset that must change. And whoever is at the National Orientation something should not complain that he doesn't have money. If he complains that he doesn't have the brain to reset that place, then we can give him money. That is what we need for that place. We need somebody to be in charge of the national orientation movement in this country. A lot has been damaged. I'm sorry to use that word in this country. And we need a reset to get people along the kind of development that Dashiwaju is talking about, the kind of narrative that he's trying to spill out. We need somebody to anchor that in a sustainable fashion, so that people will begin to understand that, yes, this is not a fight of the rich against the poor. And the rich, too, has to caution themselves, knowing full well that, yes, there will be a day when the poor will have nothing else to eat but the rich. You know, there's a book on that. And very so quickly, really um, George has called in from Ikeja. Good morning, Mr. George. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And happy New Year to our two guests this morning. Uh, let me two things caught my attention in the president's speech. Uh. The first one is the KPI for his appointees, and the second one has something to do with the wage increase for civil servants. 
on the civil service uh, wage uh, increase, I think the pre- is, a, is a, a, a step in the right direction, but the president should not stop there. When you take, you must also give. The civil servants that I see are, have not changed from what they, they have been. If you are giving them more money, you must make them to work and limit, minimize the corruption that happens in the civil service. And I've been advising that the civil service should be digitalized. That is one way to minimize corruption. Mm. When the system becomes difficult for them to you know, maneuver and uh, 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 perpetuate corruption. Mm. The second one is about the KPI for its appointees. Yes, we've been talking about it. We are looking forward to seeing their assessment. But I want Mr. President to extend it to the military and even the police. If the, the National Security Advisor should monitor them and they should be given KPI, if security is not improving in your area within a specified period, then it simply means your term is expired. All right. The police, the police should do the same thing. Mm. Any DPO that crimes are happening in its area of jurisdiction, more than a certain number will no longer be there. That's the only way I, I think... I agree with you. Work. I agree with you, Mr. George. A good example is the killings, the Utah killings in Plateau. You know, just uh, just um, on Christmas Eve, we understand that the number of deaths there has risen as high as up to 200. I mean, it has to fit into someone's KPI as well, especially when a situation like that arises, you know, over and over again. Quickly, Ambassador, you heard Mr. Imolein talked about a national orientation program. You know, on one side is the expectation of the citizenry you know to participate in government but on the other side is the responsibility of government the primary responsibility of security and welfare uh, you agree that there's a trust deficit you know between the two how do we get the citizens on the side on the other side to do their part if they don't trust the people in government uh, well uh, thank you very much uh, once again I, I couldn't really uh, agree more with him with respect to the fact that uh, the national orientation Agen agency of a country have got a big job cut out for themselves uh, the truth is that uh, we know this system and we know that the major challenge we have in the country is the fact that everyone is expecting to get out of this uh, you know get their own share of the national cake and there is actually no seeming sense of uh, contribution, what exactly we are all bringing to the table uh, to build the country. Uh, there are more tribes that, uh, that are in the United States of America than we have in Nigeria. There are also more religion, I believe, even in the United States of America than we have in Nigeria. But one thing is very common that uh, wherever there is a competition, say Olympics, for example, or say people are doing, it must not be heard that another country went to the moon before the United States of America. It must not be heard that, uh, you know, someone else went to another planet. I mean, I mean, irrespective of our challenges and our differences, I think we have come to a point where we need to understand that Nigeria is collectively owned by us and that each and every one of us have got our responsibility. Uh, yes, I agree that government must start, uh, you know, from leading. Yes, we also understand that the challenges that it seems that we are saying something and doing another. But then again, uh, someone has to bridge the gap. And I believe that information is power at this particular point in time. Let me give you an example. Quite a lot of people, a, you know, a lot of citizens of Nigeria feel that if they are entering their houses and their villages and there's a pothole there, that is President Tinubu that is responsible for fixing those potholes. A part of the work of this National Registration Agency must be to try to explain to the people even federation accounts is shared between the federal government, between the state government, and between the local government. Mm. If you look at Nigeria as a whole, I'm not sure that there's even presence of government in 779 local governments that we have in Nigeria. What a lot of you know, state governors do is that they form transition, they receive their money, they don't even allow those monies to be utilized for the purposes for which they are spent. Sent. If our local government system is working, believe you me, it will help our security apparatus. Right. Even the police mm. in Nigeria, irrespective of the KPI you drop on their desk, uh, you know, a situation where a policeman is attacked, irrespective of his uniform and his gun, 
If your brother is a policeman, would you allow him to continue to do the work when his life is at risk? Uh, so I, I believe that the responsibility is that of all of us. All right. I think, for example, it's a very sad situation. We were witnessing improvements in security situation in the country from what we had previously. And then all of a sudden, what happened in Plateau State happened. It's very disheartening. Uh, but I, I, irrespective of how you even police that area, what we find out in the history of that place is that you know it's like a reprisal people like villages attacked they know who did it and then they keep planning and then they come back again to you know to obviously exact the same i hear you ambassador i'm afraid yes. i have to bought it ibrahim has called in from kaduna right good morning ibrahim yes good morning uh, my, my uncle man yes, you good have... morning to your two guests there you have one minute my name is ibrahim calling from kaduna all right go ahead am i communicating yes yes you have Yes, let me first and most, first and foremost congratulate all Nigerians and the world at large mm. for seeing the new year. We thank God, but all thank God to all the Almighty Creator. You see, yes, both of them are spoken, and they are spoken clean and clear, right and understanding. But one thing that will come on for is politicians. I try to say politicians, their words are not so big handle. Because why? Many things have gone under the carpet. But to me, really, the present government that we are seeing under the leadership of uh, Bola Hamed Tinibu is like his year for us to see the lifeline of our success in this country. Because why? When I listen carefully and listen to his speech this morning, yes, many things come on first. And there are substances in this, in this communication to us. But implementation should follow up very well. Like the way he's uh, giving the uh, appointee that anyone who fails to perform fully will turn away out. That is the welcome development. Another thing you have to do is this. Come back to the security agent as well. You see, that is how it's going to so that you're able to, to have to people with our two eyes closed. All right. Nigeria, we want to grow up. All right. We Thank want you. to grow up. Thank you, Why Ibrahim, for your contribution. I'm afraid that's... That's how much time we have. Mr. Ibole, let's digress a bit. One of the conversations we had Mr. President have, you know, when he came to Lagos was, um, you know, talking about the demise of the, the former Ondo State Governor, um, Arakuri, um, Akure Dolu, and you are from Ondo State. So let's explore that. What do you think his legacy would be, you know, seeing all that played out, you know, earlier the, last year? If you can do that in just two minutes. Mm. First, let me thank you, Nifemi, for giving me the opportunity uh, to commiserate, commiserate with uh, the people of Ondo State at this very trying period. I'm from Ondo State, and Arakuni was my leader. And in fact, in 2012, his sojourn into politics uh, was not without my uh, great input. So also many other people. And um, he came, he saw, and I think he conquered. The first lawyer to come into politics and do the needful. Probably something that Ghani Fahomi would have done, something that uh, Alao Akabashon would have done. But he, 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 he stepped in the gap, and uh, he did his best. And of course, today, you can't talk about security in the land without talking about his input. You can't talk about somebody in power talking, to, still talking to, the power, to power, you know, uh, without, you know, without minding whether he's going to be the victim or not. He was a very fearless, very confident, very courageous leader. The whole world we miss him, not from not only our people, not only Ondoste people, and not only Nigerians. He was a nationalist. Uh, I, I hate to refer to him as uh, worse, you know, as in the past. But he's gone, and uh, we will do our bit to, 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 to continue from where he stopped. Uh, a new governor is in place, and luckily, you know, the, the, the new governor is someone who was actually, you know, an experienced person. I don't think he was uh, made the deputy governor by virtue of his being loyal alone. He's, it's a, he's a successful businessman, and he has learned the ropes in business, in politics. So I believe that despite all the shenanigans that actually ha happened in the course of his uh, rumor of debt and what have we, it, 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 the state is going to bounce back. I'm very, very co confident that uh, the state will bounce back, and I trust that people will give Lucky Aida to uh, the necessary support, you know, to meander and uh, do the needful. Uh, thank you. I thank uh, the president, and I thank the party for the support they've shown on those states. And I also want to commiserate with uh, the Olowo of Awo, 
you know, um, who is really, 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 you know, down right now. And I pray that, right. uh, you know, we will be able to get over the challenge right now. You know, Allah oh, was a great man, and we sorely missed. Ambassador, let me get your final thoughts on Mr. President's speech. Um, we're counting down now to, you know, we're in another new year, and Nigerians are also looking forward to the fulfillment of many of the promises he's made. He'd made quite a number of them in, in a speech earlier today. Um, what would you say is the next step now after this? Well, um, I think we've, um, we've spoken a lot. Uh, the president has also made his position very clear. And uh, the task is very simple. It is to deliver on the renewable, renewable agenda. Uh, if there is uh, anything that the Nigerians are expecting from the president, even the people that supported him in the elections and, of course, members of the opposition, uh, it's that um, whatever has been said, whatever has been put on paper, uh, we expect to see results. And that's why I believe that he took out time to speak to the minds of Nigerians. I'm not very sure that um, a lot of people will criticize his speech this morning because it came from the heart. And I believe that uh, the direction is already set. Uh, part of the things I'm expecting uh, the president to begin to do is to begin to ensure that um, you know, there is uh, accountability, even on the part of it. Because for him to say he's going to hold the, his ministers accountable is the first starting point. If one or two appointees uh, have been changed, because there's no two ways about that. If people are not uh, performing, they have to give way. And that's obviously one of the things that Nigerians would want to see. And then they will begin to have faith that this is no longer business as usual. I'm also calling on Nigerians to be patient with this administration. It's a challenging time. I know it sometimes it sounds like, uh, you know, this is uh, something that has been said repeatedly. But we're asking that Nigerians should be, should be patient with this government. Let's also change our attitude towards nation building. Let's not just leave whatever we need to do and we believe we can do ourselves for the government to do. I believe that each and every one of us have got a role to play. If you're a church leader, Please uh, be a church leader and do whatever you need to do for the development of Nigeria. Wherever space you find yourself, let us collectively come and build this great nation. This is one of the most beautiful nations on the faces of the earth, on the face of the earth. And we can't afford to let it just slide right. on the account of the fact that the person that we supported is not the president yeah. or that uh, he's not from my tribe or that he's not from my religion. I believe that collectively and together we can move this nation forward. Happy New Year to all Nigerians. Former Nigerian Ambassador to Burundi, Ambassador Elijah Oyangba, thank you so much for talking to us. We've also been speaking with environmentalist and APC Chieftain Tunde Molehi, who joined us live from our Abuja today. Gentlemen, thank you for your contribution on the program today. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for watching the program. We're back tomorrow with yet another one. I am Nifemi Ogunto.